let's get started with today's lecture, which is about stability, and in particular, the modern control theory stability in the sense of Lyapunov. And we started with a simple example or illustration from last time. We know how stability looks like if we are talking about a single point mass. The dimension of motion is very simple. A mass move around uh, in, a, in a single direction on a line. We know how stability means for this motion, right? We know uh, if it's stable, if, it's, if it doesn't move, that's obviously stability for this point mass. And then we started thinking about more complex systems where your x, your state system is a It's a vector, so you have many more degrees of freedom compared to this case. For example, if, in a, if it's in a two-dimensional space, then your point can move in this plane, and stability, a very strong stability concept mm -hmm. is that it motion is going to converge to the origin. This is a very strong stability assumption. This is the asymptotic stability. And then if it is three-dimensional, or even higher dimensional, then there will be even more vector and linear algebra involved. So how can we, the fundamental question is, how can we simply judge a complex system stability from a simple mathematical calculation? It's not obvious. Think about there are many, many degrees of freedom in how you can judge stability from a very simple criteria. It's not obvious. So that's one, one thing. Another thing is we talked about system dynamics. For this system, we don't have additional input. And then it has an A matrix. It has a state vector. We now know how the solution looks like. We know how the state vector evolves in the three-dimensional space in a complex way. And we know the general solution. So A is general, n by n uh, matrix. So A is an n by n matrix. It's very general. What we're going to do today is to make this connection between this physical scenario to this using this concept of energy and the Lyapunov equation. So let's get started first. Um, from the energy viewpoint, we know if we can even make this a little bit more complicated, we can have a spring attached to it. We can have a damper attached to it. We know how the energy of this can be described. The energy of this point mass it contains two things. It contains, for this particular example, kinetic energy, kinetic and potential energy. And then, how do we express kinetic energy and potential energy for this example? In here, the potential energy is coming from the spring. If we say the position of the mass is x, from the equilibrium point, then the potential energy is half of kx squared, where k is the spring coefficient. What about the kinetic energy? The kinetic energy depends on the velocity of the mass. It's half of its mass times the velocity squared. So it's x dot squared. These two energy components define the total energy in this point mass. And then from this energy viewpoint, right, how can we know the system is stable or not? How can we know for this particular system the state vector is position and velocity? How can we know one simple criteria that can get us to the conclusion that the state vector will go to zero. Both position and velocity will go to zero. What is one simple criteria to tell us that? We have to lose energy somehow, don't we? 
So if both energy goes to zero, then this must go to zero. Because energy is intrinsically a square term. It's, it's a squared term. If a square term is zero, then both of them must be zero. This and this must be zero. So that is a very simple, if you think about it, simple and powerful concept to tell. We just use one criteria. If the energy goes to zero, then we can actually, we actually intuitively understand that the state vector must go to zero too. So that's the power of the simple yet very, very intuitive concept. Now, how can we, the, the general case, so this generalizing, will become the Lyapunov equation. The energy equation will become the Lyapunov equation for this dynamic system case. And then there's another thing that's interesting to, to, to see. How these energy equation are written, you can see it's the total energy, let's say uh, E total, ET, is these two combined together So this is the classical way to, to, to see this. Now, let's bring more linear algebra. The, the important thing about modern control theory is how you interpret things in a linear algebra way. So look at this one. How can I somehow bring more matrix analysis into this? This one, it can be written as half of this state vector, position, and velocity transpose, and then K, this matrix here, times the vector. So this is equivalent to this if you multiply things out. And then if you write it this way, then symbolically, you just have one term instead of two terms. You can write it as half of, let's call this uh, x vector transpose. And then this matrix, um, I can write it as uh, p, and then x vector. So all we're going to do today is to do more of these so that you can write these kind of functions in an elegant linear algebra way. So that's a key element over there. And then after we make the connection between the generalized energy concept to this matrix analysis, we're going to talk about properties of this matrix such that we can easily conclude stability, or whether the energy goes to zero and the state vector goes to zero. So that is, that is in a nutshell, um, modern control systems, the stability analysis over there. Now, there will be some technical elements over there. I will try my best to explain. Some of those technical elements will be included in the uh, lecture notes. I won't go through all the details, but uh, uh, you, you should read it after class. So let's get into it. First of all, let's talk about, let's, let's, let's go back one step and think about why we do this fundamentally, right? We know how to talk about, how to, how to judge stability, for example, for this one. We know how to calculate poles of the transfer function. Why do we still need this kind of thing? There are a few fundamental flaws or fundamental limitations of the previous approach to judge stability. It's frozen again. First of all, this approach we talk about here, you do not have to solve, you don't have to go, go through this step. This step can be mathematically very tedious to calculate. So, 
but but this is the ultimate. If, if you know exactly how to solve this, you obviously know the stability immediately. This approach here, it doesn't require you to solve that, so that's a convenience. And second, uh, it's an energy perspective. It is one mapping from uh, high dimensional space So it is a mapping from the n-dimensional space space to a single scalar case. And then when you can consider the scalar is always simpler to calculate than vector spaces. So this energy perspective is very helpful. And then it fits for all the general dynamic systems that we talked about whether it's linear or nonlinear, whether it's time invariant or time varying, this approach all applies. So it is much more capable than conventional classical control theory. 